traveled the road less traveled and our foundation scripture is Ephesians chapter 4 we're going to look at several verses in Ephesians but this is coming out of the message Bible but for uh, to get us started let's look at verse 1 let's all read that together can we do that one two three read here's what I want you to do while I'm locked up here a prisoner for the master. I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. Amen. Say, there's a road I'm supposed to travel on. Now, I want to do a little recap because we touched on some of this, but some may not have been present when we started. And uh, uh, reminders are always good. Jot this down because we told you you should be taking notes. Always know and remember that life is choice-driven. It's choice-driven. A lot of people, what, what we tend to do is we want to make our own choices, but we don't want the consequences that come with the choices that we make. And you can't separate the two. Life is choice-driven. Amen. And um, uh, I want to read another scripture to you. This is not on your paper, but... Uh, Psalms 32 and verse 8, it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. This is the Lord talking, but he says, I'll instruct you and I'm going to teach you in the way you should go. That, that phrase, way you should go, the way is speaking of a road. So a lot of times we're trying to get God to speak to us and give us instructions, but our feet are going in the wrong direction. The instructions are for the direction you're supposed to be going in. Amen. Amen. They don't teach you about being a doctor uh, in the gym. You got to be in the classroom where those instructions are being given. Your feet have to be in that direction. Amen. And so what the Lord is doing, like at the beginning of the year, he spoke to me about the divine order of grace. There is order in the kingdom. And grace gets us saved, gets us in the kingdom, but also grace uh, teaches us how to function in the kingdom. And grace helps us to fulfill uh, our purpose, our assignment. We have grace for everything. Why? Because Christ is grace. Grace is not a message. It's a person. And the person is our king. And we're in his kingdom. And so when you find yourself dealing with things, facing stuff, uh, you have to back up and say, Holy Spirit, uh, help me to navigate this with the grace of God. And you have to open your mouth and say, I receive the grace. I receive the abundance of grace. Will it be pressure coming at you? Yeah. But there is nothing that can withstand the grace of God. Amen. I don't care what you're dealing with. Everybody deals with something. You can deal with it with God's grace, or you can deal with it without it. But I like winning. Amen. 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 I was praying this morning, and the Lord told me, he said, uh, I was talking about, you know, just different things that, you know, uh, we face, we deal with. And the Lord said, he said, son, don't you remember at the beginning of the book, after everything was created, it's written that I rested? I was like, yes, sir. He said, I'm still resting. 
Here's what he was telling me. We struggle over things that he's already provided. We're trying to get him, come on, God, do this. Come on, God, do this. Come on, do it. He's already, he saw your day before it ever came. So he went ahead because of who he is. He went ahead and provided everything that we would ever need. You, your children, those that you may never, your descendants, you'll never see. He's already provided. But we can leave a track record. We can leave a, a, a road, a way paid that those that are coming will hear the story and know how to walk this way. Yeah. Amen. They'll know how to overcome. Amen. Am I making sense here? Yeah. So we're to walk or better yet run on the road that God called us to. So life is choice driven. Mm. You know, Proverbs 14 says that there is a way that seems right to a man, yeah. but its end is the way of death. So don't just run after something because it looks pretty. You got to know your lane and, and follow that. Amen. And don't just say, well, I'm, I've been in the way for many years. Don't be in the way. Stay in your lane. Amen. You're, you're wired. You, you are built by God to run the course that he set for you. And you don't have to be concerned about the next person. Be supportive, but don't be intimidated. Amen. Well, uh, I think I could do a better job if y'all act like y'all interested. <laughs> so look at your outline. God is committed to maturing us by conforming each of us into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. Because of this commitment, there is a road that each of us is to travel that connects us with destiny. You don't know the way. It is never going to be where you don't need him. Amen. He doesn't give you an instruction, then he go hide somewhere, or you just push him off in the side to the side, stick him in a room and lock the door, and then come back when you when you really, really, really gotta have him. You know, now folks will say, uh, things are going on in, in somebody's life, and somebody said, we, we're going to have to pray. And then somebody said, has it come to that yet? <laughs> so in the book of Ephesians, we learn the process. There are processes. Everybody say processes. You cannot avoid God's kingdom processes for your life. And he doesn't always explain to you what he's doing. You can ask him, but there are times that he will go silent. I can't hear nobody now. Anybody ever had him to? <laughs> you're talking and you're asking and you're seeking and pulling and moaning and groaning and foaming and slobbering and all that kind of stuff. Whatever you can think of that you, you think it might get his attention. And he doesn't respond. He doesn't say anything. He hadn't left you. He just ain't talking. I know it's not good English, but he ain't talking. What do you do when he ain't talking? One of the things I've learned over the years is that we leave the Holy Spirit out of the equation. Learn how to ask him, what should I be asking right now? Because you can spend your life asking the wrong question. Well, well, I ask, or the Bible say, ask, knock, seek. And I ask, and he ain't saying that. I don't hear, I ain't hear nothing. You don't order the king around. Sometimes he just wants you to come sit in his presence and be grateful, be thankful. Do a recap of what he's done for you. Because if you're not thankful, you think somebody owes you something. And you'll always be demanding something. And the Lord is not, he's not a sunny boy, and he's not, he's not your next door neighbor. He's the king. It's unfortunate in the Western Hemisphere, we don't know anything about a king. We vote on everything. So we don't like what the king said. We don't see him as the king. I don't like that. Okay. 
if some, somebody come to your house and they say, well, I don't like the way you got your furniture arranged. You could have some old Herculon furniture. Yeah, I remember that. That was the cheapest you could get. You could have some of that old velvet 1970 edition with beads hanging in the door and a strobe light over in the corner. That's your place. And if somebody come in and don't like it, well, you have, a, you have choices because you're still living and life is choice driven. The choice you have is leave. You don't like this, bye. Look at your name and say bye. <laughs> okay, those folks came into your, into your space. Your, this is your, your domain. And they say they don't like this and that. And then they want you to be favorable toward them. Give them this and that. You ain't got nothing to say to them. Because they dishonored you. In your place. The earth is the Lord's. He owns it all. He didn't owe us anything. If there is an owe, turn it around. Amen. I know I'm speaking to somebody today. So we learn the processes of standing. We learn the process of walking and then engaging in spiritual warfare or conflict. Not that you got to try to uh, take stuff, but you're going to have to learn how to contend for what's yours. Amen. Amen. And the enemy will come to take what's yours. And he's banking on us not knowing. Not knowing is being in the dark, is, is being ignorant of of our inheritance. That's why we always pray Ephesians chapter uh, chapter one that the uh, chapter two, I'm sorry, that uh, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. Well, chapter one, but uh, so that we will know. And what we need to know is what he called us for and the power that he's given us and the inheritance that we have. If you don't know what's yours, then how are you going to access it? How can you take hold of it and walk in it? You don't even know it's yours. And we want to do it by sidestepping the book. I just want God to give it to me. He's already given it, and I find out what he's given. Well, I don't like reading. Well, you don't like living. Because, anyway... So we got to learn how to stand. Then you got to learn how to walk. This is part of the, the maturing process. God is not going to leave us in an infant stage. He's not going to leave you as a child. We will always be his children, but he's not going to leave us in, an, in a state where we're not productive. Always know that the Lord is about us being fruitful. Remember in Genesis uh, chapter uh, 1, the Lord said that um, he said, uh, let's make man in our image, in our likeness. We're gonna give them uh, a domain. He said, when he he blessed Adam and Eve, and he said, "Be and multiply." You can't multiply until you're fruitful. So if I don't let him take me through the process where I'm I'm in a place to be fruitful, I can't multiply. And if I can't multiply, I can't have dominion. I believe I'll say that again. If I'm not fruitful, I can't multiply. If I can't multiply, I can never have dominion. Can't have dominion. Dominion is not dominating people. It's dominating the spear or the road, the lane that you are created to run on. Um, how many of you are familiar with Toyota vehicles? I remember a day there were no Toyotas in the U.S.,
We're living now in a day where Toyota has a dominion, a dominance in the market. But what they had to do first was be fruitful. They had to get Toyotas in the U.S., people driving them at whatever cost. Because people were looking at it. Because if you saw Toyotas back in the day, you'd be like, what is that? I think the only car that hadn't changed its shape is the uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Is that what it's called? That little bug-looking thing? It looked like that in the 60s. Telling off on my age. Huh? But they had to get the Toyotas on the streets. And pretty soon, people started realizing the value of the Toyota. And they started, they were fruitful. Then their fruitfulness starts spreading all over the country. And now, because they are fruitful and they have multiplied, they're having dominion not just in the U.S., but in almost every country on the planet. It's a principle of the kingdom. Wow. Well, I guess I'm, I'm out of here, so I'll go. Fruitful. To be fruitful, you have to deal with your flesh. You're going to have to deal with your flesh. And I'm not talking about, oh, they just sound, you know, oh, God, trying to get me to stop sinning. No. That don't mean folks running around, quote, what we call sinning, doing the, doing the dirty, the dirty dozen, you know, whatever your dozen is. <laughs> it is making sure that you are consecrated to him. We're consecrated to him. That's side A, to be fruitful. Side B is now that you're consecrated to him, you have surrendered yourself to him and he cuts you. That's too much. Most saints say, just tell me how to get blessed. I am. Okay, go read the Gospel of John. The Lord talks about it. He talks about uh, that if you bear fruit, if you're not bearing fruit, it's cut off and tossed into the fire because you're non-productive. That that's dead will kill the rest. If you put a good apple in a barrel of, a, a bad apple in a barrel of good ones, the good ones don't turn the bad one good. The bad one affects all the rest of them. So you got to get the bad one out. Because it's a carrier of death. <laughs> that don't mean you go around beating up on folks. But you have to address this stuff. Because people want to be fruitful, but I don't want to process. And so he says that if we bear fruit, then he comes and cuts it. But he does it for a reason. So that you can bear more fruit or more better fruit. Your orange is already sweet. But when he prunes you, it's sweeter than ever. It doesn't make sense to the head unless you understand that about fruit bearing. And so he will cut you. Elbow your neighbor say, you, you're up for being cut. <clears throat> See, what I'm pointing out are some of the things that, that really cause saints to take their feet off the road. Because, see, it's easier to go the other way. You know, I don't want to be cut. You don't want to be cut. All God's children don't want to be cut. <laughs> and so we go in the same direction that is opposite of what he said we should be, where we should be going. But ain't nobody saying that because, you know, who am I to tell you, you know, uh, we need to turn around and be cut. Don't nobody want to be cut. So just, y'all know, there's certain, some things you just don't say. 
We just go on. You know it ain't right, but we just ain't going to say nothing. He's after fruit. Put your hand on your heart and say, he's after fruit in my life. Amen. So the word road refers to a process or a course of action that leads to a certain result. So God wants results. It's fruitfulness. And he wants our life to have kingdom results. The Lord was always about fruit. If you read the Gospels, uh, many of the uh, uh, parables that he used, he was talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is as if a man sowed a seed. He talked about seed and it produced. The kingdom is like a seed. And it, when planted, it will grow. The kingdom is in us. One of the most aggravating things that all of us as believers can experience is when we refuse to cooperate with the king and his kingdom agenda and his directives and his principles. It's like attacking yourself. And so there are a lot of frustrated saints and we're looking for counseling. And the counsel is stop being rebellious. Well, I'm not rebellious. Yes, you are. You're rebelling internally against the king. Because I don't want to do this. I don't want to forgive. I don't want to give. I'll give this. I don't want to give that. That is what the king wants. Not this. But I'm giving this. Well, you're in rebellion. Now you're in the kingdom operating in the principle of Satan. Did you know rebellion is the principle of Satan? So taking the road less travel is acting independent of the crowd. You can't be trying to fit in with the crowd. Even the crowd that goes to church. Because God wants something accomplished. He wants some fruit from our life. And he's got to. I'm, is this too much? Who wants to be productive? Because I'm telling you, it's very easy to blow five, ten years. And you look up and it's like, you know, where did time go? It never stopped. It's moving at the same pace. But it can get away from you. And the Lord tells us in Ephesians, uh, redeem the time. What do you mean redeem the time? It means to buy it back. Tap into wisdom and know how to manage your life. Let the Holy Spirit show you his, his uh, uh, what do you call it, his day planner for you. How to manage your time. It, to, to redeem the time means to buy it back. An example I always use, you can leave here and go to L.A., you can drive. Drive straight through. On the average, it's going to take you 24 big ones, 24 hours. You got seven days. When you get there, you're going to sleep for two. <laughs> so three days are gone. And you got to be back at work. So you're going to have one day. One day to enjoy sunny California. A. And then you got to turn around and drive back because you're going to need two days to rest before you go to work. So all of that for really one day. Or you could pay some money and fly. You bought time. But a cheap rascal. Oh, you, how much? How much what? You see how much that ticket costs? Ooh. Anybody got no money for that? I'll just drive. I don't mind. Yeah, but your body does. Then they have you on, 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 on the 6 o'clock news across the country. 
There's somebody driving around the desert in circles in, in, in New Mexico. They lost. And the police tried to help them. They argued with them. And they got your picture <laughs> on TV. Lost in the desert. Look at this. Y'all, y'all come on. Y'all wasting my time. The dynamics, which is a force that stimulates change and progress within a system. The dynamics of the kingdom of God produces dynamic kingdom people. That's those who are energetic, they're active, they're lively, full of vigor, high-powered, aggressive, bold, and enterprising. They're also magnetic and passionate, and they're high-octane. Everybody say high-octane. High it's actually the breakdown of the Greek word dunamis, and that's what the Lord talked about in Acts chapter 1. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That word power is the Greek word called dunamis. It's, a, it's, it's one of the, the power words that's used in the Greek language. Now, this word power refers to uh, something that'll move you or that'll move something. Uh, a police has authority. The bad shows it. It's authority and power. The power of the city or the county is behind that badge. And they can tell you, they can stand out in front of an 18-wheeler that's running, hold their hand up, and this person is a woman, and she weighs 125 pounds. Hold her hand up. That authority, that power, that truck driver recognizes and should stop. If they don't, on her hip is do numbers. You can stop or you can be stopped. It's to your advantage. Thank you for joining us for The Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.